Today we're going to be talking about understanding the high and the low of the day. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Thursday, we've had some absolutely huge moves this week for 50 pips or more on some of the pairs and a lot of the other pairs. Uh, the Euro, Euro pairs, tonight we have the Euro uh, refinancing rate at uh, 7.45 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. A lot of the Euro pairs are up high. We could see some interesting moves on those pairs. Myself, I like to have the news come out prior if i have if i am in a trade that was a pre-existing trade i will look for the news to possibly be a catalyst to complete that move or if there's nothing set up or i haven't been in a position i like to come to the screen after that 15 minute news candle has closed and then go back to my 12 candle window and look for the market to set up either for a move uh, once that news has been factored into the market or perhaps maybe nothing at all because the catalyst completed the move and the market may go into just a sideways consolidation trading range. Today we're going to be talking about understanding the high and low of the day. I've had a lot of questions regarding how, how, do, uh, how do I recognize when you're really at the high or the low. We're going to really clarify that today because it's very straightforward. But also I just want to remind everybody I've had a ton of emails uh, from people who Missed the webinar on the weekend, the great debate, and it was fantastic. I had a lot of feedback from people that really enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was incredible, actually. It, was, it exceeded my expectations. We had the opportunity to listen to six professional traders from around the world go one-on-one, -on -one, uh, two at a time, and just share their different perspectives on the markets, how they trade, what they look for, their strategies, their macro factors. But for those that have asked, which I've received probably over 50 emails asking for um, if I can get a copy of that. I've been able to secure a replay of that webinar and if you're interested let me know. I'm going to try and get that uh, set up for the next couple of days to share that with everybody. If you didn't get a chance you'll be able to rewatch the, the webinar. Uh, very, very powerful information, huge amount of knowledge that was shared and just really interesting to hear other traders perspectives on how they trade the markets. And also I'd like to thank everybody for the comments and the feedback again and the email questions. Uh, just again trying to piece through uh, as many as I can. I promise you I will get back to answering all questions but today we're going to review our simple structure, just our big picture scenario. Structure, high and low of the day, timings, round numbers, engulfments and pin hammers. Now today Specifically, just to really simplify things, we talk about, well, we'll add Friday in here as well. We'll put some numbers. Doesn't matter, 50s, zeros, quarter levels. Okay, you don't even need to have those on for this exercise, but let's say we have a high of Friday. We have a low of Friday. Monday opens up somewhere in here. Okay, and we, as the day progresses, we establish a high and a low. <clears throat> but we're inside of the high and low. And at some point, as the day expands its range on Monday, again, we will establish a new low and a new high, and those become our levels. But it's important to remember that we are still inside of the real high and low until the market breaks through that high of the day. Now, at some point, the market may pull back and traders are trying to short these peak formations but all we have now is a high of the day and this is important because we had, we have a high we have a low but we need the market to be working the low for a reversal or breaking through and pulling back for a continuation so just because we get a, a high in place does not mean that that is a trade if the market pulls back and hits it a second time hits it a third time but we're in between the timings we know that the market could potentially still come up and maybe hit the high with a middle structure before it reverses back down towards the low, the low of the current day. So we could have our, the low of our current day, we could have the high of the week and the low of the day as our ranges. The market may move through that low of the day and again go back into consolidation and start the process again. So we will have a high of the day, we'll have a low of the day, 
And these session swing highs can be significant as well because remember the golden rule. Where is the money? If the market is just inside of a high and a low and it's making new highs or new lows, you have to remember that you're inside of the previous day's highs and lows. And we know that that's where the bulk of the liquidity or stop, stop orders or stop losses, pending breakout orders, profit taking orders, um, stop loss orders, you know, all the different types of orders that are sitting above and below. But if we're inside, even though the market is establishing peak formation high, peak formation low, we are still inside until the market gives us a reason to be entering in that current day. If we're inside and we're heading towards a previous day's higher low, we want to be trading with the trend. If, and the easiest way to understand that is that if you have a high and you're going to be going long and, the, and the, in the Asian session they set a high and it breaks out, you want to make sure that you're looking for the buy low opportunity, whether that's a swing setup after it hits a low or if it's a breakout pullback, one, two, three at the timings. But if we're headed towards a previous day's high of day or low of day, the other option is for traders to wait until the market takes out one of those levels. It's really important to understand that outside of the 12 candle window, if you are in here somewhere, whether that's yesterday's high, today's high, if you're outside of that 12 candle window, I can guarantee you with absolute certainty that when the 12 candle window presents, if they have not gone to one of those extremes, whether it's in that first hour or second hour, and in some cases the hour prior, they're gonna go bang, bang, bang. And they may just hit it and pull back, depending on if it's the third push to the high. We saw some 33 trades yesterday uh, pound yen, I believe the pound New Zealand, uh, the pound Canadian gave an absolute incredible trade, a 33 trade after the news. Then the equity markets opened and they went one, two, three to the high engulfment, pin hammer for a hundred pip move down. We'll look at that as an example today as well. So as the week evolves, remember the money is above and below. And if they're working the high for a sell, then they're going to jam it in at some point with three pushes and shift it. And we've got a straightaway setup on the pound yen today that set up after the thir three peaks yesterday. They dropped it down, went sideways, gave an M pattern right at the, the open of the 12 candle window and bang, they've dropped it 50 pips and we may get a bigger trade still to, to evolve out of that. So where is the high? Where is the low? Let's take a look at some examples. If you're inside of two peak formations, one up top and one below from yesterday or from the previous session, you are inside. And you can try to trade off of the bottom and the top or the swings, but you're inside and they're jamming people in. And at some point, right at the 12 candle window, bang, 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 they're going to hit the stop. So you better hope that you're in the right direction. Or if you're patient, you'll wait for them to give you the setup if you're not already in a trade to either continue the trend or to look for uh, three pushes into a peak for an engulfment and pin hammer. Somebody said to me the other day, these are traps, they're, they're, you know, the candle patterns aren't consistent. If you're at the high or the low of the day and at some point in that 12 candle window or just outside of it, they lock it in and engulf it and then put a pin hammer there, I'm taking that trade. I, that's what I do. I take those trades, I put a one bar stop in, and I'm gonna go for my back to where they're gonna they're gonna go back and get the trader who's in profit from the other session. Or if it's a trend trade, the traders who have counter-trended the trend are gonna be margined out or they're gonna be the ones whose stops get hit first and they'll do a measured move into those traders. Whenever I look at the chart, I just know that if I'm chasing something inside or if they give me a candle that looks tasty and fills me in the middle somewhere and I'm outside of the timings, I call that the dead zone. Okay, Unless they go to the high or they go to the low, to me this is just trapping traders in, in both directions and eventually they're going to either hit the high for a third time or they're going to they're going to hit the high and reverse or they're going to go into the high and push it three times at the 12 
candle window or they break out and pull back and work into it three times as we saw in some of the euro crosses this week some great setups heading into the u.s session after strong moves in the europe london session but if you are not at the overall high or low and you're you're trading off of highs and lows inside okay you need to be i i go to break even as soon as it hits another high or low if i'm long and it hits a, a previous high i'm at break even because if it fails there it's going to come back towards my trade so again just keep it simple traders where is the high where is the low if you're not in the trade wait because you'll be blown away at how many times right if they're just sitting there nice and quiet it's dead zone it's quiet it looks like it's trending and then all of a sudden bang 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 they go out and they hit a high or they hit a low and if they don't do it in that first hour, they're going to do it in the equities open. And often that is the trap at the open opening of the equities markets, dragging traders into the move in the wrong direction at the extreme before shifting it and dragging it the other way for 50 or more pips. So again, thank you for all the comments. Thank you for hitting the like button. Again, if you wanted to follow up on that, uh, watching the replay of the webinar, just pop me an email. I'm going to try and get the link set up and for the replay and uh, have it available for everybody but again stay focused traders stay disciplined uh, Thursday there's gonna be some big moves today and tomorrow there's already been some big moves today but we got uh, some data coming out tonight and it's Friday tomorrow so we could see some big moves either reversals or continuations and uh, keep it simple have a great trading week end the day on a strong note and may the markets go with you let's take a look at some examples Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, just continuing our discussion on understanding the high and the low of the day. So we're looking at uh, the pound, yen, and we're looking at Monday. We have Friday's high. The market opens up inside of Friday's high and the swing low from the U.S. session closing the market trades and breaks through higher. So traders have asked, how do I know where the high and the low are? We're always using the reference of other highs and lows because until those highs or lows are broken, you are inside of a previous trading range of peak formation highs and peak formation lows. So every area where the market has swung and engulfed and reversed, that is an area, an anchor point, a peak formation, whatever traders want to call it, it doesn't matter but you're inside because these below these levels are where there are orders. They can be profit taking orders. They can be breakout orders. They can be stop out orders. Uh, they can be all kinds of things. So when traders say, Oh, it's about liquidity. It's about liquidity. Well, you're right. But the majority of the bulk of that liquidity is sitting at highs and lows. So when the market trades up, and reverses in the first bar of the 12 candle window off of a previous high. This is when we pay attention. We're not looking to short that. The market is making new highs on the day. It's hit a high and pulled back. What we're interested in now is how it behaves if it goes back to the high. We get a one, two, three engulfment reversal for our M formation, which in this case is not quite 25 pips above the high of the day, but for all intensive purposes, this is probably what you would call a type two. It's at the high of the day. We have a middle structure, and the market is also at this stage at the high of the current week. It reverses down, engulfment pin hammer all in one candle. You've got a one bar stop, trades down to the low of the day, gives a pin hammer. Pulls back. Now we have a new low of the day. That is not necessarily a trade though. But we have a reference point peak formation for the market could go straight back up to the high. Or if it works it on two pushes, pulls back and hits it a third time and gives you engulfment pin hammer into the next 12 candle window at round numbers, then our trade is locked in for the next 12 candle session. We have a low bear. The market has hit it a second time, pulled back inside, gone into consolidation, given us a four bar engulfment reversal, as well as a pin hammer on the bull candle 
and we're at round numbers and we're at the low of the day and we have a middle structure for a measured move the market trades up to the high of the day though traders may have used this as their profit target which I would as we head towards the US session uh, the later we go the closer we are to possibly being at the end of the move we take out the high of the day the market pulls back and reverses off the high of the day takes out the low of the day and when the market does something like this on a Monday this is an ideal opportunity to then be looking for a possible peak formation or a continuation through the overall swing lows from Friday so hopefully that makes sense so each day now we have reference points the market puts a peak formation high in place as we head into the Asian session the Asian session heads down confirming our peak formation high for the session takes out the previous low of the day and the previous peak formation low trades into the peak formation low from Friday's US session goes lower so we're making new lows before hitting it a second time going into consolidation and then coming back up inside which is a stop hunt on the Asian session shorts but we have a new low and I said this earlier when the market if you're inside now we have a type 3M that's confirmed a trade but if you're inside the markets definitely gonna hit these stops at some point and it'll usually be just prior to or in the 12 candle window the market goes one two hits stops on the first mouse that shorted the market gives us our type 3 M formation for taking out the low of the day and then pulling back inside we had a middle structure one push two pushes sorry one push two push pull back three pushes to the low and pulling back into consolidation one push two push three pushes which is a stop hunt on the traders who shorted the type 3M at numbers and what do they do they go down 50 pips and take out the low of the day and we also have on that day one push two pushes three pushes to a low so we have a peak formation low in place and we have a peak formation high in place and then the market on Wednesday goes back inside so when you're inside of the peak formation high and the peak formation low of the week okay so you're in the middle you're in the middle and what does the market do it gives us a peak formation high okay we'll zoom in on this goes up in our 12 candle window and what do you know one two three engulfment pin hammer Just. now the market comes down and goes into consolidation doesn't take out the low of the day so traders have shorted this and they want to know why it hasn't worked well what we have is a market that's made a high and it's made a new high but we've had higher lows this is a trending market so again you're shorting into a trend but when it comes back the second time traders short this and this setup in the middle that takes out the the low of the Asian session and the middle low gives us a middle structure now they've taken out the low they've broken the trend trend line break okay if you wanted to trendline break retest of the high and when did it happen just prior just prior to the 12 candle window three pushes to the high one two three we have a middle structure that's taken out the swing lows but what makes this important is the engulfment the engulfment after they hit the high of the day right at the beginning of the 12 candle window in the US session who's in profit the guy down here so the first place they're gonna go probably is round numbers for 50 pips you weren't a 50 pip box double zeros to 50s and look what they do as soon as they hit the zeros which is at the market maker low of the day these candles are all different on everybody's charts but for all intensive purposes they hit the low of the day and they go one two three back inside why because that stop hunts traders who shorted the inside the bull candle inside of the engulfment 
and then they drop it down and they go into consolidation. And if you notice this, okay, if we back this up, we had a one, two, three, and they pulled it back inside. And what did they give us? One push, two pushes, three pushes, three peak formations, three sessions, three peak formations. And then they went into the consolidation underneath the middle structure. That is the perfect setup for the straightaway trade all the way back down to the low of the week. Now the market has, just as we've opened up, if you're not already in this trade, you can see there's stops down below the low of the week, but this, this will give a measured move. Well, if we measure even the right shoulder of our last peak, this should give us a measured move at least down to 75. So stick with the highs and lows, traders. If you're not at a, if you're at a, if you're just trading inside of the highs and lows, make sure that you're understanding that if they're making higher highs and higher lows, you're in a trend, and if you're shorting into a trend, you're probably going to get hit again. Wait for the break of the highest low or the lowest high, depending on which way the trend is. That's what sets up the middle structure for your reversal trade. And if we measure our middle structure, we've already done one full expansion of that. We're below the first full expansion. So I'm expecting another expansion down to 75.80, just as we head into the London Open. We take a look at the pound Canadian. This was a brilliant setup last night. We'll just scrunch this up. Just another example of how the news can act as a catalyst to take traders either in the wrong direction, but we have our reversal of Monday's low of the day. We talked about Monday, Tuesday forming our initial balance. Monday, Tuesday, the market comes back up from the peak formation low. One push in the Europe London session, two pushes prior to the US session. We'll zoom in on this. Oops. Actually, we'll do that. Okay, and let me just back this up. Sorry. Okay. So we break out of the high of Tuesday. Market pushes up, one push, two pushes, and then one push in between. Okay, we haven't even had the news yet, so you can expect that they're going to go back up there again. Two pushes, and then look, one. Two, pin to the high, three inside bar, engulfment right at the equities open on a 33 trade. Okay, there's your high of the day. They hit it three times and then a pin inside bar, engulfment back inside of the range. Okay, as soon as it clears this middle structure, I'll just put this on here. Traders can go to break even at the close below that middle structure. This should not come back. Our first target are these three higher lows and then the low of the day. If the market does a measured move, we should do at least one full expansion, which we did towards the end of the session. And now we're continuing that move. It's possible we could see a second full expansion take us down towards that 69.15 area. 33 trade, high of the day, they hit the high, so there's a, there's a trending market. They hit the high, they hit the high, but then their lower peak inside that second leg, and then one, two, three pin engulfment at the equities open, at the timings. So they've stop hunted the high of the day, and then they've gone and hit it three times and a one, two, three with an inside bar engulfment. And you notice all three of these bars except for the low of the first bull candle has been engulfed. The next candle breaks the middle structure, break even for traders, measured move at least of one full expansion of that range as your target. So instead of targeting 50 pips traders, this is the difference where you're targeting the measured move. It breaks that structure in Asia. Uh, so high probability this trade could continue down towards the, I'd be holding this to the 69.25 20 area. Hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Mark off your highs and lows. Understand if you're inside or outside. We talked about this yesterday. If you're inside of the peak formations, again, let the market work one side before either knowing that you're in a breakout pullback continuation or 
they're working the high for the reversal and again the 12 candle window is when you will see a high probability of either reversals or continuations. Have a great trading session and may the market school with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.